Hello and welcome to the Football Parliament podcast, your one-stop destination for all your football debates, discussions, and opinions. Today we have a lot of topics to discuss about, and we have posted just two to three hours back. And if you haven't seen that video, please go and watch that too. But before that, just stay here and watch this one because I'm pretty sure this is gonna be an entertaining one with a Man City fan who's been partying all night, Rishabh Kumar, our Man City fanboy. <laughs> um, glad to be back. For this, you know, it's going to be an exciting podcast. You know, it's hard to control the excitement for the last podcast we recorded. But, um, yeah. you know, it's how it is. This was one of our most relentless seasons ever, you know, for the Premier League mm. itself. What a terrible start we had. We were 10th in the league when we first started. And, you know, with our 20-game unbeaten streak, which ended on the 7th of March against Manchester United. You know, we had, some, we had a pretty good time, you know. And especially... Okay, first and foremost, let, let me talk about the one player, you know, who I feel contributes majorly to the success, and that is Ruben Diaz. I've, I've, I've made a little yeah. note about Ruben Diaz's statistics this season, and, yeah. uh, and I'd just like to read about it. So, uh, so okay, like Stones, so... Diaz is best with the ball at his feet, and actually, you, will not, you won't believe this, he's completed 93.52% of all his attempted passes in the Premier League this season which he's misplaced only 157 off from 2,421. As well as with his aerial defensive duties, he's won 62.5% of his 88 aerial duels. He's been absolutely top class against Guardiola. And since his arrival, we've conceded um, only 15 goals since Diaz's arrival. So 15 goals in 28 games, 14 of those games ended with a clean sheet, you know, with either Edison in goal or Zach Steffen in there. And... There's nothing else to say except for the fact that all our players have been brilliant this season, you know. And I I feel all of us can agree on this. Ilkay Gundogan was the biggest surprise from Manchester City this season, you know, stepping up when Kevin De Bruyne was injured and out. And yeah, we did, we did like, you know, miss Aguero on the pitch, you know, only one goal from open play, one penalty. And, you know, the scuffed penalty against Chelsea. But all is forgiven for that anyways. So... Yeah, it is. It has been a very good season. A lot of ups, a lot of downs. A major downfall, you know, being Sergio Aguero leaving our club. This is the fourth legend of ours to leave uh, in a consecutive year. You know, Yaya, Toure, Vincent Company, Davis, Aguero, Sergio Aguero. So, it is going to be an emotional one considering the fact he's been here for almost nine years. And it's been, it's been absolutely brilliant. And not, there's nothing but praise for Manchester City you know, for the way we've conquered England all over again. Like, granted, Liverpool was absolutely top class last season, finishing the league with 99 points. So, the Centurion record still goes unbeaten, but this time, 80 points, uh, you know, to become champions, it was it was pretty okay, but the competition this season was tough as well. Um, Vedan, what do you think about Man City winning the Premier League this season? I mean, to be honest, my prediction went completely wrong because when the season started, someone told that Tottenham Hotspur is going to win the Premier League. And I agreed with him. And guess what's happening right now? City and Spurs have interchanged their sports completely. City have won the Premier League. And to be honest, they deserve it because uh, Liverpool had they had a complete down this season. Manchester United, they won't win the Premier League anytime soon because they still need to do some work on their squad. Chelsea are ready and might win the Premier League next season. And Man City is the best team in England or maybe in Europe right now. And they completely deserved it. Sergio Aguero was the only player who I wanted to, you know, see for his final season. But that hasn't happened this season. So, it's fine. But the good thing about Man City is that, I mean, it's a good thing and a bad thing. But they don't have a striker. They're not dependent on a player who scores. I mean, if it's not Foden, it's De Bruyne. If it's not De Bruyne, it's Gundogan. If it's not Gundogan, it's someone else. The goals just come from somewhere or the other. So, that's a, that's a great point about Man City. And talking about uh, Man City, I would also like to ask a question to Nishit and Rishabh. Who's the best player of Man City this season? Starting with you, Nishit. Can I go first? Uh, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um... yeah. As I said, as he mentioned clearly, that Ruben Diaz has been one of the most influential players on the field. And I think it is because of him that City have gained this much momentum defensively. And how he has changed everything. The, the entire uh, team plays, uh, plays better when he starts. So, uh, I think 
even defensively and attackingly uh, both uh, the attackers also get a lot of confidence when they have a good defense i think so they can attack and go forward completely and plus when you have and i also had a question for uh, rishab that do you think uh, ruben diaz has not been uh, as hailed as van dyke was because he's done um, enough things yeah so wait to answer vedan's question first um my 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 city player of the season is going to be riyad mahrez you know from the two years he was at city he was extremely inconsistent this year he's outperformed probably every right winger except mohammed salah you know because mo salah is probably like the god of the right wing in the premier league right now and riyad mahrez stepping up you know in the premier league hat tricks braces you know making those crucial last minute balls um you know to in matches where we could have lost a great a lot of players have done that but riyad mahrez for me has been amazing but yes i agree with nishit too like ruben diaz does take is extremely close to it for me because of the influence he's had on the pitch you know creating that confidence both in the defense and the attack and um to answer your question nishit it's actually honestly kind of good that you know ruben diaz hasn't been given the hype that van dyke was given when they won the champions league and the premier league because the hype around him you know made him seem like he's the best defender we've seen in ages you know like probably since fabio canavaro or maybe maybe like paolo maldini but then people tend to forget you know current legends who are playing the game you know like sergio ramos and um gerard pique for the matter as well so it's it's very good that you know he's not been hailed uh, as much as virgil van dyke is right now but he could definitely outlast him you know the next season so nishir who was uh, wait, sorry veda who was your player of the season for man city Kevin De Bruyne was out for a couple of months, I think. So I don't think he'll be my player of the season. Phil Foden was outstanding, but he's still a youngster, so I won't pick him here. I think I'll go for Ruben Diaz because he's been influential for Manchester City. I think Man City paid around forty or fifty million for Ruben Diaz, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, sixty-five. Sixty-five million, yeah, and he's been worth the money completely. I mean. In Ruben Diaz, Manchester City have found their next Vincent Kompany, so they're pretty much sorted. And Nishad right now must be feeling, God, I just wish this guy would be in our defense right now in Barcelona's team, right? <laughs> yeah, man. All I could do is pray when the other teams are attacking. Uh, please, not this one, not this one, not this one. I've been praying yeah. since the last three games. Just don't concede one because we're not going to score one. That's all. Um, That's the speaking of Barcelona. Barcelona. And um, defenses, Barcelona Levante. Nishe, what do you have to say? To that? I have, I have nothing to say. I have lost all hope that I had. I mean, I was watching it's it just a so disgrace. comfortably. It's a disgrace, right? For you, it is. Yeah. It sure is. I mean, we had on. the game. It was such an easy game. We had it in our hands. We had it like two nil, and we went into the first half two nil up. Then suddenly. I don't know what happened in the second half. They got complacent, I guess. Uh, so, I, I don't know if did you guys watch the game? I saw yeah, the highlights. I, I didn't see the entire. So what happened was uh, we conceded a goal in a counter attack, one goal. Yeah. So at the, that was at the fifty seventh minute, and suddenly after like having uh, the ball for like one and a half minute, they gave the ball away, and the next attack it goes in again. I mean, what? Mm-hmm. What do you expect from? I mean, I don't expect that from the team because you're going going to win the title. If you want to win the title, you have to be much better. And I think the reason why Man City also won the season was because the defense was so good this season. And uh, just like that, they they've been they are in the Champions League final as well. So that has been the biggest change. Like Atletico Madrid is the le- leading La Liga right now, so uh, they have the best defense. in la liga at least so i think we have lagged a lot defensively and i don't trust this defense anymore we need new players asap so what do you feel is the weakness in your defense or the weakness in barcelona as a whole where do you think that weakness lies see i think whenever someone we are not aggressive enough to stop them when they are countering i think we just let them in and then we are complacent in the end uh, we just let them in our d, d box and there sometimes there's handball there's stupid mistakes every game i mean uh, defenders don't cover the strikers that's not how it works we have to cover every ball that comes in 
and i don't know i just don't have any more words i was so disappointed last night almost cried for like two or two hours okay no not talking words. about talking also talking about the, before, yeah, sorry, no just a second talking about barcelona and counter attacks i mean that hasn't been the story this season it's always been there even in uh, i think just after barcelona's golden generation this has been the story forever even against roma against liverpool they were pressing and they were counter attacking again and again and barcelona just couldn't handle that even bayern munich for that matter i mean i remember twice that bayern munich counter attacked once they almost got the goal and the other time they had the goal so and mm. again today against levante okay just a second this season again real madrid we counter counter attacked uh, sorry counter attacked through valverde lucas vasquez and karim benzema and that went for a goal so that has been the story forever and no manager has worked upon that so i really don't know plus levante proposed literally nothing in the first half but they capitalized uh, on roberto's weaknesses when when he came on the three goals were easily avoidable but gonzalo melero scored a header after some suspicious defending from the visitors jose luis morales scored a scooper volley and sergio leon scored a near post finish to draw in the dying minutes jose luis morales i mean rishab doesn't watch la liga so i'm guessing he doesn't know about him but nishad and i are frequent la liga watchers i know morales so I we know, know yeah jose luis morales he's a pretty underrated player he's literally been car- he's first of all levante's captain and he's been carrying them for a really long time and uh, levante i think it was last season or season before they scored twice against madrid and madrid really couldn't do anything and it was all luis morales doing the they even beat atletico this season if you yeah they beat right. atletico too so levante are an underrated side i mean obviously they're not that ahead in the standings but still they're a good decent team for barcelona i'd say that they attacked a lot more but they missed many chances and that's only because they don't have a striker right now and that's a position where barcelona need to work Franky De Jong, Pedri and Messi, they all missed clear opportunities even if the latter two scored. Dembele scored a beautiful goal to cap off an outstanding performance at right wing back from him. Uh, in the end it is the final draw. Barcelona cannot in any way concede two goals in quick succession as they did today. Moreover, they cannot recognize a late equalizer like the one Levante scored tonight. Individual mistakes by Ter Stegen, Sergio Roberto and even Gerard Piqué. costed them a lot and meant the team in pink to lost two points in a heated title race the second half display was genuinely embarrassing and the catalans can kiss la liga goodbye okay so just a short question to nishad specifically you could just tell me in a short way now you know with uh with city's eric garcia you know being rumored or heavily rumored to join barcelona um at the start of the new season do you feel like he is going to bring that sort of change into your defense you know is it time for pk to move pk and utd to move out of barcelona's defense i think to answer this question fairly i don't know what's going to happen i'm excited but as excited i am i'm worried because this team uh, has been having this defense for like the last generation i mean we've watched them play and there has not been any defender who's taken the place of gerard pk so I think it is time for us to move on from these uh, older players even Busquets for that matter we need to rest him now and we need players who are physically more capable like I guess we need that aggression to win games we can't just sit back and play po- like possession game anymore because people know when whenever anyone presses us we give up with the ball and there's the, then there's that one attack and the game is over then they can sit back and everyone knows if they give the ball to Messi they're going to crowd him that's it that's that's all that's going to happen and then he's going to get a foul if he scores a free kick amazing if he doesn't barca loses that's it and exactly what you said uh, i think it's high time we change our stuff even the managers i mean they can't help it if the players are going to play like that so mm-hmm. i don't think it's for them to be blamed uh, even komen what can he do when the players don't have any morale in them to play <clears throat> Yeah. Speaking about so, Ronald Koeman, I would just like I would want to ask Nishu the question: Would you want him to be the manager for next season? Because there is a high chance of him not being one. Is this a yes or no? Yes. Yes. And yes. Okay. Yeah. Even um, as a Madrid fan, I would want Ronald Koeman because I think he's done a fantastic job for Barcelona. He has. I mean, he's lost. He's lost key games, but that's also because Barcelona's team is very young. 
especially in the middle of the park and even defensively speaking because they have the likes of araujo mingues uh, des etc i mean uh, just one more thing uh what oh. yeah sorry so uh, the thing is gomen has started a process and something like this does not take one season i think he needs to be given more time so that he proves himself that's all i mean the man deserves a chance after uh, at least competing in la liga after where we were yeah talking about barcelona man jose do you miss El- ernesto valverde now <laughs> i've been seeing the memes as well so <laughs> i've been praying that yeah maybe he would have been the right man for the job even after but we all criticize him so much that we deserve this i guess so i all i want is for chavi to come in after a season or two and see what he does to the team what he brings in and maybe have the barcelona entire board being consisting of the the older players the legends maybe that changes a bit moving on from la liga we're going to talk about serie a juventus aspolo edan why don't why don't you kick us off and in short just tell us what do you think is going to happen in the match juventus need to win this game because if they don't they're out of the champions league for sure this is like they're literally this is literally the final chance they have between the champions league spot and the europa league spot and pray that atalanta lose their game tonight just so that juventus can have the chance finally to get into champions league spot because for me i mean all of us are ronaldo fans not nishit though but in the podcast too most of us are ronaldo fans and we would want ronaldo to leave but considering his mentality and stuff would he leave i don't think so because he's the guy who sits on challenges i mean he would want juventus to qualify because if he just runs away from challenges what's the point of saying that he wanted a new one so i don't think he'll leave juventus and juventus should get a champions league spot even with these poor performances like just a question for our viewers and for velang as well if you know supposedly and the more likely scenario is that juventus isn't going to qualify for the champions league do you feel like it would be better for juventus and ronaldo himself if they decide to terminate the last year on his contract you know he costs 75 million to the club you know that could be invested in prospective players it could be invested into someone else and do you think that andrea perlo still deserves to keep the job at juventus talking about cristiano i feel that he should say but considering juventus's financials and stuff I think he might leave because he's costing Juventus a hell lot of money, and he needs to go. But the question is, who will buy him for at least thirty to forty million too? Considering he, as good as he is for his age, Manchester United uh, re-signed Edinson Cavani, so I don't think that's going to happen. Real Madrid have clearly said that they are not interested in buying back their best player ever, so that's there. Sporting Portugal can be an option for Cristiano Ronaldo to end his career. Although it will be sad, but that's there. And PSG—they're the only club who can actually buy him. So let's see what see... happens. It actually depends on Kylian Mbappe coming to Real. Do we see? Um, just a simple yes or no question again. Do we see? Um, you know, Ronaldo betraying the Man United fans and turning to the blue side of Manchester. Do you feel like that is a likely scenario to happen in the event that? You know, Ronaldo decides to leave the club because City are currently in need of a striker, and as unlikely as it sounds, yeah, we might sign someone like Harry Kane. But do you still feel like there could be some amount of charm? See, Cristiano Ronaldo is a guy who's loyal to the soil, so I don't think that's gonna happen ever. You won't see Cristiano in a Manchester City shirt, but you can see his arch rival Lionel Messi in a Man City shirt. What do you feel oh, about I that? Highly doubt. I I no, personally personally um I I don't think that Messi should come to City I don't think it's the right move for him because you know like Pep, like Pep said and I'm going to back up and said this Pep said that the new camp is Messi's home and I feel like that's why he should say you know coming to the Premier League at the age of what 34 I think uh, at the at the start of next season yeah. it's not going to be good especially him. yeah especially the fact that you know the Premier League is so physical compared to um you know other leagues uh, in the world so ideally you know financially plus it wouldn't make sense for us because messi is probably one of those 100 million a year players due to his salary so 
I would love him there, but I don't. I don't think there's any need for him. The thing um, is, uh, okay. the way City play. I'm sorry, I cut you in. But uh, no, the no, no, way no. the way City play, I don't think Messi Messi would suit it's you at all because yeah. because the City gameplay is total possession and a high intensity game, high intensity game. So Messi at this age, I don't think he'd be suited to that, and he needs space and time when he's on the ball. So prem in the prem, I really think I personally think as well that he should stay in Barca. But I do want him to go. That's one more thing. I want him to oh. be in the Premier League once. I that's my personal wish, but I don't think that's going to happen. So do you feel like the Barcelona rebuild should happen around Messi, or should it just start afresh? You know, not focused on the players specifically. I don't think it should happen around Messi because Messi is going to be ar- around for like one or two years. That's it. I think it should be around Ansu Fati. I think he should be the one who should be given a lot of priority. Uh, and the more renewal he gets, the more confidence the Barca fans get. And the players like Ricky Puig, I th- I know he's been on the bench for a while, but he is one of the most promising talents that there are there is. So I think it should be around Let's these guys. And Ronald Araujo. Yeah, plus if Kiman uh, Kuman leaves, Puig is gonna be a starter for sure, because yeah. we all know Kuman and Puig they don't have a great relationship together. So you can clearly see Barcelona's middle three are completely set: Frankie De Jong at CDM, Puig either side of the midfield, and Pedri. So the midfield is completely sorted, and the defense yeah. is soon gonna be because Fabrizio Romano recently tweeted that. Uh, Eric Garcia is going to sign for Barcelona. He already has a pre-contract available for three or four years, I think, or five years. Four. Yeah, four years, yeah. So, Araujo and Garcia, they're set at the back. So, Barcelona are actually doing quite well compared to their bitter rivals, uh, Real Madrid, because we're way behind. We still have our legends. We need to offload them. Anyways, that's all the time we have for Barcelona. Yeah. Yeah, that's that actually we've spoken about them a way too long, a bit Lord. too long. Yeah. Now we go to Atletico de Madrid. This game against Real Sociedad could define La Liga. I mean, if Atletico wins this game, in my opinion, they're gonna win the t- title. If they draw, Real Madrid still have a chance. If they lose, Real Madrid wins the league, in my opinion. So, uh, Atletico Madrid had a clash with Barca at Camp Nou last Saturday in a crucial game in the race for La Liga title, but nothing happened. Los Colchoneros had the slightly better chances in the match, but it finished as goalless to maintain the two-point lead at top of the table. Simeone's, Sim, sorry, Simeone's men have, a, have sat at the summit for the majority of the campaign, having won 23 of their last 25 outings. Uh, and they still will be desperate for their first La Liga since 2014. Uh, they now have a simple task of winning their last three league matches, which is against Real Sociedad, the first game. The game remains remains. Shit, my tongue. Real Sociedad, over the other hand, their game against uh, Elche remained drawless uh, after Raul Guti's red card in the 11th minute. But the hosts eventually broke the deadlock in the 72nd minute through Aritz Elustondo before Mikel Oyarzabal added a second. So they had a 2-0 win over Elche. And in this game, I would personally want Real Sociedad to win because they're a good team. They even were first for, I guess, quite a, quite a lot of weeks in La Liga. So I really want them to win so that Real Madrid really stand a chance to win La Liga. So moving on from La Liga, we go back to the Premier League to do a small review of Chelsea versus Arsenal in the London derby. Um, statistics, or at least not statistics, football pages online, especially one football, with the polls <laughs> on the choosing the combined 11 from Chelsea via Arsenal. There was no Arsenal player there at all. So, Vedant and Nishad, do you all feel like there is one Arsenal player who you feel could stand out during this match, if not decide the fate of the match? If... El Nani is playing. I I guess Arsenal have one percent of them. because in my you? opinion he's one of awesome. he's one of the best midfielders Arsenal have to offer and in my opinion the best Egyptian in the Premier League right now. <laughs> Subtle this to no. you know someone. <laughs> what about you? Nish? No, I don't really think that. I mean, there is no player in the Arsenal squad that is doing better than what Chelsea are doing. And every player on the Chelsea squad deserves to be on that list. And because the way they've been playing, it's commendable. So, I don't really think. 
personally i feel like maybe if bukayo saka were to start alongside emil smith row and alexander lacazette then an attacking chance would be excellent but arsenal's defense as we know it is not the very best so talking about arsenal's defense who do you think is going to go to who do you think is going to score because timo werner and mason mount have been in tremendous form this season so what are your score predictions and who do you think is going to score why don't we start with timo i think it will be 2-0 to chelsea um with werner and mount getting one each that's interesting what about you gaidan i think it's going to be 1-0 chelsea wins the game and timo werner scores that's what i feel that's interesting i personally feel see, it's going to be yeah see that's our prediction that i feel it's going to be 1-0 nishit feels it's going to be 2-0 but ultimately uh, even in their last game that was i guess a 3-1 win for arsenal nobody expected that to happen so never count arsenal out although they've been out of shit this season just don't count them out because against chelsea you never know they might just score a goal or two agreed um i feel personally the score is going to be 3-2 to chelsea um from arsenal i'll start with arsenal i feel from arsenal nicolas pepe is probably going to score the first alongside an alexander lacazette penalty i feel like because chelsea you know we saw against manchester city how lucky they've gotten with the decisions for the penalties yeah. and as for chelsea yeah. speaking i feel yeah i feel timo werner is going to get a double and callum hudson or dai will probably get onto the score sheet instead of mason mount so the not so the you think callum hudson or dai is going to start callum hudson or dai is one of those players who's not really very good when he starts but as a substitute he is extremely good now talking about cities matches you know the first one at stamford bridge the 3-1 win that we had he was the only one who scored the goal so since he came on he was mm. amazing and he was pretty influential at the match of the etihad again like um, if you don't remember he he was the one who came into marcus alonso you know the scuff shot that luckily went into the goal yeah so mm. i think luck will favor chelsea i think today might be the day that they'll secure you know third spot in the league or champions league football and then maybe you know I think that's how mm-hmm. it's going to be. So, Rishab, how do you think Chelsea is going to line up? How do you think um, Chelsea is going to line I up? Personally, I feel um, Chelsea. I think is going to line up in a three for one two is what I feel. You know, at the back they're probably going to have Kurt Zuma uh, and Christensen's even to do that. Maybe in Bolo and Gante at the mm-hmm. back instead of the defensive midfield and. Um, Keep forgetting the guy, Antonio Rudiger. He's been tremendous. He's been in tremendous form. A holding midfielder, I would say, you know, for, would be Jorginho. The four being, um, you know, Mason Mount, Mateo Kovacic, for the matter, from Real Madrid, who's been phenomenal at Chelsea ever since he came. Um, Christian Pulisic, and maybe Callum Hudson-Odoi. Speaking of the formation and the top two strikers being, um, uh, Tammy Abraham and Timo Werner. Is of how I feel they're going to die. What about you? Most of them usually don't start for Chelsea, though. But okay, that could happen. What about you, Nishal? What do you feel about Chelsea? I think uh, isn't Thiago Silva fit? I don't have the update on him. So Thiago Silva is not 100% fit yet. If I'm not okay. wrong. No, he's not so, 100%. And even Christensen. Christensen has. A Christensen answer. should be available. Oh no 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 no. So, he had yeah he had an injury. So I think it'll be uh uh who or Trudiger. And Zuma starting at defense. They'll be, they'll probably play four at the back, and uh, it'll be what James and Chilwell on each side, and um, I think Kante and Billy Gilmore again. Uh, I think he'll be getting another chance with Kai Havertz starting this game, and uh, probably Mason Mount, Mason Mount and Timo Werner. I'm not okay. really sure of the formation, so I'll just name the play. I just name the players. <laughs> yeah um speaking of um chelsea just a question that's out of the blue and related to vedan vedan do you feel like thomas tuchel and has the potential to win the champions league final against you know pep guardiola's manchester city like, definitely he does good. definitely he does because see i wouldn't say it's going to be a chelsea even neither would i say it's going to be a man city even because champions league finals are usually a 50-50 anything can happen it's just a 90 minute game and not Two legged, so you know, he has a great chance because he's already beaten Man City twice this season, 
I think the FA Cup was won and the second one being pretty recent, although Man City used their second spot. I don't think... See, it's going to be a 50-50, so I really can't say. And, yeah. Who would you favour, Rather? Who would you favour? Because they eliminated Real Madrid as uh, Man City. What about you, Nishad? Who do you, who I'm a Pep you fan. I'm a big Pep fan and a City fan in the Premier League. So, Manchester City. That's great. Okay. Anyway, Bishop um, is going to go for Man City anyway. Uh, that was our video for today. <laughs> that was our video for today. Make sure to listen. If you don't like our faces, you can clearly check us out on Spotify. But that's the video for today. We posted twice today. And day before yesterday, also we posted twice. So, Dedication 101. That's the video for today. Peace.